Hello comrades, it's the Finnish Bolshevik. This time I'm going to explore a significant part of the Nazi ideology, the so-called Judeo-Bolshevik conspiracy. Nazism believes that there is a secret conspiracy of Jews aiming for world domination, and they also believe that communism or Marxism is a part of this Jewish conspiracy. They don't believe that communism is a legitimate working class movement, but a Jewish plot. So what are the origins and basis of this idea? Origins of the Judeo-Bolshevik Conspiracy Theory Nazism did not invent this anti-Semitic ideology. In reality, Nazism has merely copied this idea from previously existing belief systems. The Russian hardline monarchist reactionary group called the Black Hundreds were early proponents of the theory of a Jewish global conspiracy. The Black Hundreds were extremely anti-Semitic, and in 1903 they published a book that is pretty well known these days called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, a fabricated document supposedly written by the Jews detailing their plans for world domination. Anti-Semitism of this type was more rampant in Russia than in most other countries, and the so-called pogroms, the rounding up and killing of Jews and other minorities such as Armenians, Tatars, etc., were common in Russia in those times. After the Russian Revolution of 1917, many Tsarists and Black Hundreds began emigrating from Russia to the United States and Germany. In the USA, they formed a political organization known as the Union of Tsarist Army and Navy Officers. In 1919, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was translated into English. A well-known reactionary and supporter of the Black Hundred ideology was Alfred Rosenberg, the son of a rich landowner living in Estonia in the Russian Empire. After the Russian Revolution, Rosenberg, who considered himself ethnically German, emigrated to Germany, together with many other Tsarist emigres. There, he helped to disseminate the protocols of the elders of Zion and the anti-Semitic Tsarist ideology in Germany. Up to 400,000 White Guard Russians moved to Germany. Rosenberg would later become the leading early ideologist of the Nazi party. In June 1921, a group of former Tsarist officers, industrialists and aristocrats, called an international anti-Soviet conference at the Reichenhalle in Bavaria. The conference, which was attended by representatives from anti-Soviet organizations throughout Europe, drew up plans for a worldwide campaign of agitation against Soviet Russia. A so-called Supreme Monarchist Council was elected by the conference. Its function was to work for, quote-unquote, the restoration of the monarchy headed by the lawful sovereign of the Romanov House in accordance with the fundamental laws of the Russian Empire. The Infant National Socialist Party of Germany sent a delegate to the conference. His name was Alfred Rosenberg. The anti-Semitic conspiratorial views of the Nazis and the contemporary neo-Nazi movement thus largely originated from monarchist reactionary Russians. A wealthy industrial capitalist, Arnold Reckberg, met with Rosenberg and took a liking to him, introduced Rosenberg to another one of his protégés, an Austrian police informant named Adolf Hitler. The capitalist Reckberg was already providing funds for Hitler's brown shirt organization that attacked striking workers and labor unions. Reckberg and his wealthy friends purchased an obscure newspaper, the Volkische Biobachter, and turned it over to the Nazi movement. The publication became the official organ of the Nazi party. As its editor, Hitler appointed Alfred Rosenberg. In the 1920s, half a million copies of the fabricated Protocols of the Elders of Zion were published by the wealthy American capitalist Henry Ford, who helped to spread the anti-Semitic ideology in the USA. The ideology of the Nazis, as well as their funding and support, came from the monarchists and capitalists, in other words, the rich elite. The Russian Civil War during the Russian Civil War, the White Guard reactionaries, Tsarists and capitalists, decided to incorporate their previous ideas of a Jewish conspiracy to the fight against communism. Since the White Guards were fighting a war against the communists, in Russia, a country with widespread anti-Semitism that was a remnant from Tsarism and the earlier years, the White Guards decided that it would be very useful to use anti-Semitism as a weapon in the civil war against the communists. They attacked the communists as supposed puppets of the Jews. In 1918 to 1920, more than a dozen capitalist countries sent troops to help the White Guard Russians in the civil war against communism. The United States, Japan, France, Great Britain, Canada, and others sent hundreds of thousands of troops to aid the capitalist White Guards. The capitalist media in the West published slanderous lies against the Russian communists. They claimed that the Bolsheviks wanted to abolish the family, abolish marriage, and nationalize women. 
that the Bolsheviks were hired by the German Empire, that the Bolsheviks were anarchists and Jews. These ridiculous claims, which practically nobody believes these days, were presented by mainstream capitalist media outlets and capitalist politicians of Western countries. When it comes to the anti-Semitic claims, the Nazis were not original, instead they directly copied this from the capitalist media of the West and the Russian reactionaries. The ideology of Nazism came from the rich elite, the Russian monarchists and the Western capitalists. This is logical because they were united in their struggle against the working class movement and against communism. This is what the capitalist press stated in the Western countries. In Britain, the Illustrated Sunday Herald wrote in February 1920, quote, this movement among the Jews is not new. From the days of Spartacus Weishaupt, the founder of the Illuminati, to those of Karl Marx, this worldwide conspiracy for the overthrow of civilization has been the mainspring of every subversive movement." Unquote. Marxism, the Illuminati, the Jews, they're all the same, according to the capitalist media. This is an American newspaper, the Dearborn Independent, from 1920. Quote, the three great parties of Russia are led by Jews. Bolshevism has been planned years ago by Jews." Unquote. Notice that both of these writings are from as early as 1920, same time as the creation of the Nazi party by the capitalists. And of course, this was during the Russian Civil War, 1918-1920. Anti-Semitism was widespread in Europe and Russia, increased partially by the Jewish immigration in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The term Jewish Bolshevism was first invented by a white guard publication of the same name in 1917. Soon it was spread to the capitalist media by white emigres, and this belief was picked up by the Nazi party, which was founded soon after. Most of these blatantly false claims have since been abandoned even by the capitalist propagandists themselves. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion were soon proven to be a hoax and a forgery. However, the Jewish conspiracy idea still remains among the neo-Nazis. They still cling to this capitalist invention. Neo-Nazis believe that the world is ruled by the Jews, and that the Nazis are the only ones who know the truth. They believe that the communists and capitalists alike are all servants of the Jews. Ironically, the myth of the Jewish conspiracy was itself created by the capitalists, and utilized by them against communism. The Nazis themselves are acting as unwitting tools of capitalism, but in this case, the capitalists have moved on and left the Jewish conspiracy behind. Adolf Hitler claimed that communism was a Jewish ideology. He claimed to be a socialist, but in reality he was defending the private property rights of his capitalist backers. It's no coincidence that Hitler attacked all the real socialists as Jews. When the Western imperialists turned against him, he also attacked them as Jews. Wall Street Jewish bankers, as he called them. But this was simply an opportunist lie. The capitalists, including Western capitalists and bankers, were exactly the ones who created Hitler who funded his party, and who created the propaganda that Hitler copied and disseminated. The Myth of Jewish Bolshevism Now, let us examine the claims of modern neo-Nazism. A typical claim that they make is that the Russian Bolshevik party was allegedly a Jewish puppet and filled with Jews. Robert Wilton was a British journalist reporting for several Western newspapers as their Russian correspondent during the Russian Civil War. Wilton had served with the Russian army during the First World War and was a strong supporter of the Russian White Army, sharing their ideological views, including the anti-Semitism. Wilton had also supported the failed military coup by the White General Kornilov. Wilton's writings are another significant part of the modern neo-Nazi mythology surrounding the Judeo-Bolshevism conspiracy theory. He is possibly the most cited source for the erroneous claims that the Bolshevik party and government were controlled by Jews, and mostly consisted of Jews. He wrote in 1919, quote, Bolshevism is not Russian, it is essentially non-national, its leaders being almost entirely the race that lost its country and its nationhood long ago, unquote. In 1921, Wilton put forward the following figures, which have been widely cited by neo-Nazis. I quote from a widely circulated neo-Nazi article titled The Jewish Role in the Bolshevik Revolution and Russia's Early Soviet Regime. Quote, the 62 members of the Central Committee were composed of five Russians and 41 Jews. The Extraordinary Commission, Cheka, of Moscow, was composed of 36 members, two Russians, eight Latvians, and 23 Jews. The Council of the People's Commissars numbered three Russians and 17 Jews. Unquote. 
How accurate are these numbers put forth by Wilton? The answer is, not accurate at all. It seems difficult to find any basis for them. I'm not going to go through all the false information put forth by Wilton, but I will give you an idea of just how inaccurate his findings are. Wilton claimed that out of the 22 people's commissars, three were Russians and 17 were Jews. In reality, the only Jewish commissar was Trotsky. Only one. Wilton includes a number of fabricated names in his list of supposed people's commissars. He removed people who were Russians and included people who were Jewish, such as Sinoviev, even if they were not actually people's commissars at all, just so he could pretend that there were more Jews among the people's commissars. The people's commissars in 1917 were Chairman of the People's Commissariat, Lenin. Ethnically, he was one quarter Russian, one quarter Tatar, one quarter German, and one quarter Jewish. So yes, Lenin had a Jewish grandmother. I've seen Nazis claiming that Lenin was Jewish. He really wasn't, but I suppose you can say he was one quarter Jewish. Commissar of Agriculture, Milutin, Russian. Commissars of Army and Navy, Ovsienko, Krylenko, and Dubenko, Russians, except Ovsienko was ethnically Ukrainian. Commissar of Commerce and Industry, Nogin, was Russian. Commissar of Education, Lunasharsky, was Ukrainian. Commissar of Food, was Teodorovich, who is Polish, but Wilton claims that he's a Jew. And this is another thing that you'll see Nazis doing. Whenever it's convenient, whenever anybody has a name like that, like Teodorovich, they say, oh, he has a Jewish-sounding name, therefore he must be Jewish. But they really shouldn't do that because... Look at one of the founders of the Nazi party, Rosenberg. Some people just have German and Polish names, and that doesn't mean that they're actually Jewish. Commissar of Foreign Affairs, Trotsky, the only Jew of all of them. Commissar of Interior, Rykov, was Russian. Commissar of Justice was Apakov, Russian. Commissar of Labor, Shlyapnikov, was Russian. Commissar of Nationalities, Stalin, Georgian. Commissar of Post and Telegraph, Avilov, who was a Russian. And lastly, the Commissar of Treasury, Ivan Skortsov Stepanov, who was Russian. So as you can see, there really was only one Jew among all of the people's commissars. These are easily verifiable facts. And the fact that none of the neo-Nazis have bothered to actually check just proves that they have no intellectual curiosity or that they want to be delusional. Wilton also claimed that the Soviet government consisted of three Russians and nine Jews. The Soviet government in this context being the Central Executive Committee of the All-Russia Congress of Soviets. So Wilton claims that the Jews in the Soviet government were Trotsky, Zinoviev, Luri, Yuritsky, Volodarsky, Kamenev, Smirovich, Sverdlov, and Nakemkes. He informs us that the three Russians in the government were Lenin, Krylenko, and Lunacharsky. And it's kind of interesting because usually Nazis would probably claim that Lenin was a Jew, but apparently Wilton doesn't try to do that. Now, in reality, Luri, Nakemkes, Smirovich, and Volodarsky were not in the Central Executive Committee at all. So he's just added a bunch of Jews in there who were never in the government in reality. Wilton claims that the government was 12 people and 9 of them were Jews. But in reality, the government was 15 people and 4 were Jews. I'm imagining he tried to make the government smaller, because that way, if he added Jewish names to the list, there would be a bigger percentage in relation to the rest of them. Or, if I give him a massive benefit of the doubt, then I could say that he just got all of his information wrong. Not that it really matters, all the information is wrong, and that's the end of it. The actual members of the government were Artem, Buharin, Vladimirsky, who were all Russians, Lashevich, Lenin, and Stasova, who were Russians, Stalin, who was Georgian, Jerzynski, who was Polish, Krestinsky, who was Ukrainian, Schmidt, who was German, and then the people who were actually Jewish, that is, Sokolnikov, Sverdlov, Zinoviev, and Trotsky. Of course, he tries to claim that the Polish guy and the German guy are Jewish, but they're not. Furthermore, Wilton claims that, quote, according to data furnished by the Soviet press, out of 556 important functionaries of the Bolshevik state in 1918-1919, there were 17 Russians and 457 Jews. Yeah, I'm sure, buddy. I'm sure the Bolshevik press said that. In reality, members of the Bolshevik apparatus were more than 70% Russian. Go figure. More than 70% Russian. Now, it is true that Jews were somewhat overrepresented in the Bolshevik party, making up around 5% of the party which is more than in the general population. Andre Jaritz points out in his article, The Myth of Jewish Communism, that, quote, Jews were not the only ethnic minority overrepresented in European communist parties between the two world wars. So too were Georgians, Armenians, and Latvians. 
unquote. One of the reasons could be that Latvia is pretty close to St. Petersburg, but that's just speculation on my part. The actual reasons for this could be that those ethnic minorities were particularly oppressed and therefore more radicalized. The socialist parties, which functioned illegally, actually tended to have large amounts of intellectuals who were in political exile, and this could be one reason why some minorities were somewhat overrepresented. In conclusion, the Judeo-Bolshevik conspiracy theory was something created long ago by the rich elites, monarchists and capitalists. Nazis did not invent these ideas, they merely inherited them from the monarchists or received them from the western capitalist press. The Nazis were acting as puppets of the capitalist elite, they got their ideology, as well as their funding from them. These conspiracy theories are crucial to modern day neo-Nazis, but based on nothing. Even a cursory inspection of the most popular and widely cited Nazi sources show them to be inaccurate and fabricated. There are many movements of people believing in things based on very little evidence or simply on faith alone, so we shouldn't be entirely surprised that Nazis could also do this. We just have to make the separation between the people who are misinformed and the people who are just willfully delusional.